Hey guys, my name is Dean. Welcome to Manflow Yoga. This workout is a cool down for runners and it's taken directly from my online members area. You can use this right after a run or later on in the day, maybe in the evening after you do a run. It's going to help you alleviate tension in your muscles, relieve joint pain, and help you get to your next run uh, in less time with less soreness. Hey guys, what's up? It's Dean. Welcome to Manfa Yoga. Today's workout is a yoga for runners cool down. So I like going for runs. Um, I've got dogs, so they need to be walked. And I also like going for light jogs or very fast walks on trails. So after I finish, I usually stretch, almost always stretch now. And the routine I'm, I'm about to show you is exactly what I did um, a few days ago when I finished up a run. So it's not too long, it won't take too much time, but it will help on um, reducing soreness the next day, help you recover more quickly, and also you'll feel a lot better um, if, you had, uh, if you do this instead of not doing it. So we're gonna start off in a wide-legged position. So I'm assuming you just finished running, right? So if you haven't gone running yet, go for a run, and then come back and do this again. So we're gonna start in a wide-legged position. You're gonna bend your knees a little bit, squeeze your legs toward one another, Tighten your core, pull your chest forward, try to reach your tailbone back. And so I'm trying to arch my back, bringing my hands to the ground, keeping the front of my torso long, and just coming into a nice wide-legged forward fold. I'm also going to stretch my ankles here. So I'm making sure I'm pushing into the outer edges of my feet. And also notice that I'm flexing my quadriceps so that I'm stretching the backs of my thighs. So pushing into the outer edges of your feet, getting a nice stretch for the ankles, which is important for after you run. And then lightly squeezing your thighs toward one another. So again, hugging your thighs toward one another, hugging the hips in. And then from here, we're just going to be doing some, some groin stretches. So I want you to kind of bend into one side, exhale to sink deeper, inhale back to the middle. Exhale, sink into the other side. And then just keep this up. So we're inhaling to the middle and exhaling to the opposite side. So just stretching your hips, getting deeper into the ankle as you exhale. And so just doing a nice, slow, but dynamic stretch to work into the hips, the ankles, and also really relieve the lower back. So whenever I run any kind of physical activity that involves running, whether that's playing sports or going for a light jog, back tends to get tight. So we're working on keeping the forward fold position right now to help lengthen the spine, to help create some space in the spine, relieve lower back pain or discomfort. All right, and then let's bring it back. That should be enough there. All right, and then go ahead and pull back all the way up. All right, moving into the next stretch, we're gonna do a pyramid. So let's start with the right foot forward, your left foot back, and I want you to start with a knee over the ankle on the front foot. From here, lower your hands down to the ground, so the knee is gonna be bent at first. Try to keep your chest to thigh contact, and then push your right knee toward the back while pulling your chest forward. So we're working on stretching the hamstring. You don't need a, in, in a cool down stretch, you don't want to push to your, your maximum range of mobility, your maximum flexibility. We're just trying to get the hamstring to relax and release so it recovers more quickly. So the intensity of the stretch shouldn't be too intense. You want to keep it to, let's say, between a three and a five. You don't want to be going up to like a six or a seven here. If your muscle isn't relaxed, if it doesn't feel, like you can relax, then it's not going to, you're not gonna get the intended benefit of this cool down, which is releasing the muscle. So use deep breaths here. Exhale to stretch a little more. Relax your head and neck. All right, and if you want, you can hold that for a little longer. We're gonna switch sides though. So now left foot is up, right leg back. Start again with the knee over the ankle. Hands on either side of the front foot. Take a deep breath in, exhale, and push your left knee back, starting to straighten the leg a little bit. Pull your chest forward, so we're getting a deep stretch of the hamstring and keeping your lower back long. 
or sorry, your lower back flat, keeping your torso long. And you're using your breath to help you relax. So breathing deeply, breathing in control, tells your body that it's okay to relax, tells your muscles that they can stretch. So that's why breathing is so important to this cool down process. If you're breathing quickly, if you're breathing, uh, you know, if you feel tense, you're not going to stretch very well. So again, try to use your breath to control your body, slowing your breathing down, telling your body it's okay to relax, to release. All right, bend back into the knee and go ahead and step back up. Now moving into the next one, you notice I have a chair here. So if you're by something like, um, let's say maybe there's a bench nearby or something you can place your foot up on, we're going to do a stretch on that. So I want you to put up, put your foot up on the surface and then just lean your hips forward, push down through your foot and then lift your chest up just like this. So this is one way to do it. Or you can also put your foot on the other side of the obstacle and then use your hands, if it's a bench or if it's chair, to help pull your chest up and push your hips forward. So now I'm getting a little bit more lift to the chest. And my goal here is to create more length through the front of my hips. So if I can pull the ribs up and lengthen this area, I'm going to get a better stretch than my hip flexor. So that's my goal here. You can keep your chin relaxed if you want. You can use your hands to support you. Again, it's not about muscle engagement. The goal here is on getting the body to relax. So use your hands, use whatever support you can to facilitate the relaxation. All right, and then switch sides. So again, if you want to do it, foot up all the way, like so, and leaning forward, that's an option. Or if you want to get down onto the ground, you can also do this. And if you don't have any support whatsoever, you can just do this like so in a lunge position, maybe resting your hands on your thigh, maybe resting your hand against a wall for that extra support. Again, the point of the chair, the point of an elevated surface or the wall here is to just make it so you don't have to use, um, you don't have to do as much work. The goal here is stretching. We're not trying to strengthen anything. We're trying to get your body to relax. All right, go ahead and release. And let's go on to the next one. This is a pigeon. So same concept. We're going to use an elevated surface for a pigeon. Or um, if you have a bench, that'll work too. Or even a, uh, even a railing will also work. So you're going to put your foot up. You're going to rest the outside of your lower leg on the chair. Crawl the leg back into this kind of supported pigeon position. So my inner thigh, my right inner thigh is facing up. My thigh is externally rotating. So I'm opening up my hip and I'm lifting the chest here. My goal is sinking into this so I can stretch my hip. If you feel pressure in the knee here, back off. Maybe bring your heel in a little bit more. So the, uh, your, your, uh, your angle of your knee is a little more acute, so not quite closer to 90 degrees, but bringing your heel in more toward your groin. That will release some of the intensity. And you can hold this one for 45 seconds or about a minute. Our goal here is to stretch your external hip rotators, your glutes, and that's going to release pressure on your spine. All right, to get out of this, put the weight into whatever you're resting on, slowly bring the knee back, and then switch sides. So if you've got the elevated surface, if you like that version, try that. If you don't have an elevated surface, you can also do this just as easily on the ground. So you're going to bring the knee up, rest the outside of the leg down, externally rotate the thigh. So you're trying to get the inner thigh to face up, crawl your right leg back, use your chest, or sorry, use your hands to keep your body upright at first. Take a big breath in. As you exhale, relax your hip. So notice I'm using my exhale to relax my body. So every exhale, I'm trying to get just a little bit deeper. The exhale tells your body it's okay to relax, it's okay to release, and that's going to help facilitate the muscle recovery process. One more breath here. 
And then get out of this, just roll to your left. All right, we've got two more stretches. First one is a half split. This one's really important for your hamstrings and your calves. It's gonna help to keep your ankles strong and also help to keep your lower back happy. So we're gonna start off kind of in a lunge position with your knee over your ankle. Bring your hands to the ground. If you have a block, I do recommend using a block, so I'll just show you how to use them here. And then you're going to shift your hips back Reach your toes toward your shin. Press your right thigh toward the ground. And then pull your chest forward and up. Now, look at my back. So notice that I'm trying to flatten out my spine here. I'm not rounding my back like this. I'm trying to keep my spine flat, keep my core tight, and then pull my chest up. Now, this might be getting a stretch for the hamstring, for the calf. You're actually going to have to put in some effort for this. So reach the toes back. I know that might hurt, might be uncomfortable, but trust me, your calf probably needs it. If you want to get a little bit more, you can grab the toes and pull them back toward the shin, like so. And then just deep breaths here. Exhaling to stretch more. Two more. Exhaling to push a little deeper, maybe straightening the leg a little bit more. You can also think of pushing the thigh down or pushing your femur closer to the ground. Last breath. Okay, and then switching sides. So now other leg comes up. Let's use the blocks again. Left leg up. Start with the hips squared. And then shift your hips back. Maybe crawl the right knee back a little bit. Reach your toes toward your shin. Use the blocks to keep your chest upright. It's not a flexibility contest. The goal here is sensation. All right, so we want to get the stretch to the hamstring. We want to get the stretch to the calf. You want that feeling of core engagement and also maybe some stretching through the lower back. If you're just trying to get your chest to the ground by any means or trying to touch your chest to your toes or trying to touch your head to your knee, notice what happens to my back here. Right, it looks rounded. So I'm trying instead to pull my chest forward and get lift. And this is going to get a much better stretch. And then again, if you want to get that deeper calf stretch, grab the back of your foot, pull your toes in, and breathe. As you exhale, your body will relax more. You can get deeper into the stretch. One more breath here. Okay, and then release. All right, we've got one more stretch. Um, and this is a reclined quad stretch. So this is gonna work on your ankles in addition to your quadriceps. Let's keep your knees happy. So I'm gonna have you start with your legs out in front of you in seated position. Tuck one leg behind you, like so. Depending on your ankle mobility, you can tuck all your toes, or maybe just one toe. <laughs> Square your hips forward, and then just lean back. <sighs> so we might start with the hands resting on the ground. If that feels okay, you can progress to your left forearm on the ground. If that feels okay, if there's no pain in your back, maybe progressing to the right forearm as well. You want to try and bring your hips closer to the ground. That's what's going to get the deeper stretch to the thigh. Also, getting a stretch to the ankle. Notice that this is the exact opposite position of what your ankle does when you're running. So you're getting that, um, getting the toes pointed as opposed to right, when we've got the toes reaching toward the shins when we run. So this is going to help with countering that running motion. Again, keeping the ankles happy and also getting a nice big stretch through the quadricep which we tend to use a lot when we run. And if you're just jogging, your quadriceps are much more active. We're not really using the glutes much. So yeah, your quadriceps could be very tight. I just talked a lot. So basically we're holding this for about a minute. Deep breaths, keeping your chest upright. Feel free to hold that longer if you'd like. And let's switch sides. So untuck that. Tuck your toes, lean back, start with the hands, right, resting on the ground. Relax your left hip toward the ground. Keep your core kind of tight. Maybe going to the right forearm, and then maybe progressing to the left forearm as well. And as you exhale, sinking a little bit closer to the ground. Toes are tucked, so you're getting a stretch to the ankle as well. using the exhale to sink deeper into this. We've got about three breaths here. If you're feeling kind of painful in the knee or if it's too tight, 
you can come up a little bit, right? Or if that's just not an option at all, the other alternative here is to kind of roll onto your side and then just grab your foot in this position. And you can keep this so you're relaxed all the way down instead like this. So your goal is just to get the stretch through the knee, through the, sorry, through the quadricep, to the top of the thigh. Um, if, there's knee pain, if, if there's knee pain, if you had an MCL strain or previous knee surgery and it just feels a little wonky, feel free to use this variation instead. All right, and then release. All right, and then just one more pose. I know I said we were done at that one, but I want to do one more just to help with keeping your lower back, keeping space to your lower back. So we're going to do a child's pose to finish. So knees are going to be wide. Tailbone reaches down, big toes touch. Walk your arms out and release your forehead down. Press your lower back toward your belly button. And your goal here is stretching your lower back. And if you're watching this right now and you're like, Dean, I cannot do that on the ground. That's gross. I'm going to show you one more thing you can do. We can also just do a... Uh, we can also just do a standing forward fold, but make sure that you're keeping your back flat. So the goal here, I just want you to stretch your lower back, because again, that gets tight after a workout. The better alternative to this is the child's pose, but if you don't want to get on the ground, try this. Try to get your back flat as you're doing this. So maybe if you have, you know, that elevated surface, so maybe if you have that chair, or you have a, yeah, there's, there, there's a chair out in public like that. But if you've got a bench or something, then you can try this. Your goal is just to, again, kind of flatten out the back and stretch your hamstrings, stretch your spine. All right. Go ahead and release. Come out of that. And that is your post-running cool down. You're watching this from the members area. Thank you for being a member. Glad to have you here. Please let me know how things are going. What workout programs are you using? Which workouts are you watching? What results are you getting? What goals are you working towards? Let me know. Um, and if you're not watching this from the members area, uh, you can sign up for the members area or check out a seven day trial, get access to all these workouts, workout programs, and much more at manfulyoga.com slash seven dash day dash trial. All right guys, thanks for watching. Um, and I will see you on the next workout.